Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, as we sit to hear your word, I pray that, Lord, may you open the eyes of our understanding, that, God, we may be brought to the reality of the finished work of the cross. That, Father, at the end of this service, Father, our lives will never be the same again. For your glory, Lord, may you speak to us. Lord, even as I speak to your people, may I speak the very oracles of God in this place, Jehovah God. Thank you for every soul that shall be delivered this morning. Thank you for every backsliding soul that shall come to you. Lord, we are calling forth souls to the kingdom. Any, vo any man, woman under the sound of my voice this morning that is not born again, Lord, we speak salvation. We speak deliverance in the house. We speak healing in the house this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you glory and we give you honor in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. If you have your Bible with me, let's turn to the book of John. John chapter 19. The book of, um, the book of John chapter 19 verse number 30. John chapter 19, verse number 30. That's the, the story given by the Apostle John concerning the death of Jesus. And uh, I just want us to focus on the words that Jesus said on the cross. And then we'll be going through several scriptures at request that we be still in the presence of the Lord. Amen. John chapter 19. John chapter 19 and verse 30. The Bible says, when Jesus, therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Praise the name of the Lord. I want you to turn to your neighbor for me and tell them, Jesus said, it is finished. Say to them again, Jesus said it is finished. And so this morning we will be just laboring to understand what it really means to have the, uh, the finished work of the cross. And my prayer for all of us is that at the end of this, we may walk in the revelation and enter into the rest of God, knowing that it is finished. That whatever struggles we have in life, the price was paid. Praise the name of the Lord. The words, it is finished, was an announcement to the world. And the gospel or the good news is also an announcement to the world of an accomplished fact. Praise the name of the Lord. I want you to walk with me closely. Uh, the genesis of this finished work of the cross. Let's go back so that we may be able to understand. In the, in the book of Genesis chapter number 3, after God created man and put him, no, created the world and put man in the garden. He created the world and then he put man in the garden because uh, we are told that in the spiritual realm, Sorry. In the spiritual realm, there is an order. There are patterns. Praise the name of the Lord. So the world was created for man. Praise the name of the Lord. God saw it fit that he created the world, that he put systems and things in place before he created man. Praise the name of the Lord. So when man came in, his role was to dominate. His role was to rule. His role was to be the ambassador or the representative of God on earth. Sorry, we seem to be having technical issues, but the Lord is faithful. Amen. And so uh, in the book of Genesis chapter number three, we see after man was created in uh, Genesis 1, 26 and 27. In chapter three, we see the, the devil coming into the scene and tempting. Uh, first, he approached the woman and then the man came to the scene. And when God appeared when God appeared because it is it is written in the Bible that when God created man and put him in the garden of Eden he would walk and have uh, he would walk and have fellowship with man God would walk in the cool of the day seeking for Adam 
that he would have fellowship with man. And so, child of God, you and I have been created for the purpose of fellowshipping with God. God longs for us to fellowship with him. But when sin entered, there was a separation. Praise the name of the Lord. The fellowship was broken because God, being a holy God, could not associate with a sinful man. Are we together up to that point? I want us to walk closely so that we may understand, so that as we are walking down the journey to get to the cross and to get to where Christ was saying it is finished, we will have an understanding. And so in the book of Genesis, when the man, uh, when the devil tempted Eve and, and, and he came and approached him, approached her and told her, who told you that if you eat this fruit that you will not live? It's a lie because there's something that you do not know. God does not want you to have knowledge. If you do this, your eyes will be open. Praise the name of the Lord. And so Eve gave in and also uh, looped in. The husband, praise the name of the Lord. And so at that point, when the man sinned, that is where the relationship of man and God was. There was a breach, praise the name of the Lord. There was a separation. Or if people can call it, there was an alienation. The, the man that God created, the perfect man that God created in the beginning, there was something that came in between the relationship, praise the name of the Lord. And so the finished work of the cross, the purpose of the finished work of the cross was to restore the relationship. The purpose of the finished work of the cross was to reconcile the sinful man back to God. By nature, we were born in sin. Understand that. Praise the name of the Lord. Even the young children that we are giving birth to, by the time they hit the world, they are already born in a world of sin. It is by nature. Not because of what they have done, but because of the nature of, that we have, the Adamic nature. Praise the name of the Lord. And so Christ had to come and step in to become the sacrifice that would appease God. The gospel is an announcement to the world of an accomplished fact. What God set out to do for mankind, mankind he accomplished on the cross. And so this morning, there are six terms that we will learn truths about the finished work of the cross. Six terms that describe how our relationship with God is made new because of our faith in the Lord Jesus. When we were born in sin and the moment we begin to receive the word of God and believe, because the Bible says in John 3, 16, that whosoever believes, when you believe, that is the point of salvation. That is the point where your relationship comes back. You are reconciled back to God. The six terms that describe our relationship with God, how it was made new, one of it, uh, there, there are six of them. We will be going one by one, and then we will be able to, to finish. The first one is uh, that the finished work of the cross brought about what is called propitiation. Propitiation is, means, simply means that the, the anger of God was fully satisfied by the work of the cross. When man sinned, even in the Old Testament, the priests of the day, were offering sacrifices. There were sacrifices that were made on the altar. They were told to bring a bull or bring a goat so that blood was shed so that there would be forgiveness. Child of God, listen to me. For the many times that men in the Old Testament sinned, the many times the sacrifices were done. But thanks be to God, because for us, there are the only sacrifice that was needed and that required to appease God and to take away the anger of God and to satisfy our remission was the blood of Christ. What am I saying to you, child of God? No matter how many times you have sinned or you will sin, the blood of Christ on the cross paid the price for the forgiveness of your sin, not just now, even 20, 40 years to come. Praise the name of the Lord. Because it is the finished work of the cross. Before, 
when you sinned, you had to bring a sacrifice. So just try to imagine a picture where today you lie. Tomorrow you steal. The other day you do something different. How many goats will you sacrifice, praise the name of the Lord, for you to be forgiven? But today, we are living under the new covenant, the covenant of the blood. The blood that satisfied everything that we have done, we will do in the future. It was paid for on the cross. So friends, we do not have to live in condemnation. We do not have to walk like people who are not forgiven. Every time the accuser comes and tries to remind you how bad you are, how unacceptable you are, how you have done this and the other, stand in the face of the enemy and tell them by the power of the blood, I am forgiven. I am forgiven. My sins, because of the sacrifice of Jesus, God's holy wrath or anger, was fully satisfied. That is what it means by propitiation. Praise the name of the Lord. Because even in the olden times, the African tradition society, we are told when the gods, gods meaning the, the small g, when the gods were angry, the traditionalists used to take goats and make sacrifices so that they can appease the gods. Praise the name of the Lord. And for us as believers, the sacrifice that was needed to appease the father, that the anger that he had towards sin. Remember, God did not hate man, but he hated the sin. Even today, God is not angry with you, but he is angry with sin in you. Praise the name of the Lord. And so if we can come to a place of realization that I am free by the virtue of being born again, that whatever sacrifice that was required, it was paid for by the blood of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. And so how do we respond to his action? It is by coming into a relationship with Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Let me give an illustration and say that there is a difference between walking alongside a pool of water and jumping into the water. When you walk alongside a pool, I was in summer when swim. Praise the name of the Lord. You can only say nilipitia karibu na swimming pool. But the moment you immerse yourself in that swimming pool, you become one with the water. True or not true? Praise the name of the Lord. And so it is with salvation. Our response to the sacrifice that was given is for us to come into a relationship with this Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. We are to respond to his action by saying yes and jumping into the new life that God has for us. Those who respond with faith in Jesus Christ, God's son, receive a firm assurance of security. Praise the name of the Lord. First John 5 and verse 13. Today we'll read a lot of scriptures, so you better be ready. Go to First John chapter 5 and verse 13, so that we may understand what it really means to walk in the finished work of the cross. First John chapter 5 and verse 13, the, uh, the Bible says, These things have I written unto you that believe, you that believe. The bottom line is believing. Praise the name of the Lord. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. The bottom line is believing. Friends, no matter how many times you listen to a sermon, it will not have an effect on you if you do not believe in Jesus, if you don't accept to have a relationship with Jesus, praise the name of the Lord. We have an assurance also, according to 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17, a scripture that we love quoting, that if any man, any man be in Christ, he is a new creation, praise the name of the Lord. The moment you come to Jesus, everything that has happened in your life, before meeting Jesus or anything that would have happened to you, the moment you have an encounter with Jesus, it takes a total turnaround. Praise the name of the Lord. Every sin that you have committed, anything negative, name it. You can be able to put a list 
of the things that you have been through. But the moment you come to Jesus, there is a turnaround. Because the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, oh, the old is gone. So you no longer live like the old Adam. You no longer walk after the flesh. You no longer live under condemnation because you're free. Praise the name of the Lord. So the true knowledge of God has been seen through what he has done, through the finished work of the cross. And so number one, we have said propitiation is his God's holy anger being satisfied because of the sacrifice of the cross, because of Jesus giving himself up. In Philippians 2, 9, the Bible says that he did not count equality with God as something of value, but he humbled himself to the death of the cross. And therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. That at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. To the glory of God the Father. So his anger, the anger of God against sin, not against man. Because it is the devil who brought in sin. Man in the garden was perfect, perfect like God. The scripture tells us that we are made in the image and in the likeness of God. Because in him, there are no lies. In him, there is no darkness. In him, there is every good thing that we desire. But when sin comes in, it separates us from God. It brings a bridge. There is a broken relationship. But thanks be to God, because of the finished work of the cross, we can begin to live free of condemnation. We can be begin to live free as people who are in Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Believers who know Christ and have trusted in him for salvation know that they are forgiven. Believe that they are forgiven. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, salvation is not just getting born again and going to heaven. Salvation simply means, kuna kitu umekombolewa from. What have you been saved from? God has saved you from sin. From sin. We have been saved from sin. Because God is, not a, is a holy God. Therefore, he cannot associate with sin. And so for him to reconcile us back to him, he had to get a sacrifice that would appease and would stand on our behalf. Understanding that we are resting in the, in, the, in the finished work of the cross gives us confidence to know that God is no longer angry with you. I said, God is no longer angry with you. You may look at your life and say, oh, but I have done this. I have done this. I have been this in the past. I want to assure you, if any man be in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. All you need to do is to embrace the new life, the newness that comes with the revelation of the cross, and then you will walk in the confidence of Christ. Bona sefiwe. In Colossians 3, 6, Paul described God's response to all evil and sin as righteous, holy wrath. Yani, Paul alijaribu kueleza what sin means to God. Sin is, is something that is detestable. He cannot stand sin because he is a holy God. Praise the name of the Lord. And we must not project our experience with human anger to assume that he, he, he's just the same. Praise the name of the Lord. God's wrath is not a mood swing. His wrath is not a mood swing. It is not a fit of temper. He's not, he's not a, like, like a child who throws tantrums. His anger is destructive. Praise the name of the Lord. And his anger is not against us. It is against the sin in our life. Praise the name of the Lord. But again, the same way he has, he's angry at sin is the same way his love and unrelenting forgiveness is towards us. The same way he hates sin, he, hates, he loves us even more. Praise the name of the Lord. He just says, believe in my son. 
be born again and everything that you have done or you will ever do is forgiven and forgotten. Praise the name of the Lord. Every wrathful judgment of God in the history of the world has been a holy act of preservation. The reason why God hates sin is because he wants to preserve the man he's created. Because if he is not a God who hates, if, if he condones sin, if he's just okay with things, uh, with the devil messing us up with sin, then, then he, cannot, he cannot just be a good God. Praise the name of the Lord. We will try and put him in a box. But if he hates sin, it is because he wants to preserve you. Because he created you and I in his image. And therefore, he wants to preserve you. And how does he want to preserve you? He is saying that he cannot stand sin. Praise the name of the Lord. So his anger is an act of preservation. He wants to preserve mankind. He wants you to have dominion. He wants you to reign and rule like the king and priest that you are on earth. Praise the name of the Lord. Propitiation. But... There was a sacrifice that was presented in Romans 3.25. God presented Christ as a sacrifice for, uh, for propitiation for our sins. God himself offered us a solution. If you read back in the book of Genesis, when Adam and Eve sinned and they realized that they were naked, what did they do? They began to take some leaves to cover their nakedness. But God in his mercy, when he came down, much as he was angry at sin, he still had mercy. Praise the name of the Lord. And what he did, did he do? There was a sacrifice, the first sacrifice in the Garden of Eden where a, a lamb was slain and the, the covering was used to cover Adam and Eve. That was a symbolic of the sacrifice of Christ on the cross. That blood had to be shed for us to be covered from our nakedness. Praise the name of the Lord. The blood of Christ was the perfect sacrifice that stood in. And this day, when God looks at you, child of God, he does not see sin. If you are in Christ, he sees the sacrifice of his son. When the Lord looks at you, he does not look at you in the eyes of where you are or what you have done. He looks at you and sees the sacrifice of his son. And he says, you are forgiven. And he says, you are are the beloved of God. Praise the name of the Lord. And friends, God is no longer angry at you. And he's no longer angry with you. Praise the name of the Lord. Because he's, he offered his son as a sacrifice. So propitiation is a, is, a mean, is a word that means to appease or to satisfy. So the anger that was in God against the sin of man by virtue of Jesus dying on the cross, that anger was appeased. God said, yes, I have received. Remember when Christ hung on the tree and when he gave up his ghost and died. No, when God, before, before Christ uh, uh, died, when he was on the tree, God looked at him and he saw the sin that his son had carried, the sin of the world. And for a moment, the Bible records that God turned away. And that is at the, that, that's the moment where Jesus cried out and said, My father, my father, why have you forsaken me? Because when God looked at Jesus on the cross, he saw the sin of the world. And because God is a holy God, he could not see, stand to see sin. But in that moment as well, he accepted the sacrifice of his son on our behalf. So friend, when the Lord looks at you, he sees the sacrifice of his son. When the Lord looks at you because of the blood of his son, he says you are free. Begin to walk in the freedom of Christ. Begin to walk in the liberty of the spirit. You are no longer a slave to sin. You are no longer bound in shackles of sin. If you are in Christ, because if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone and he is living under the new covenant. Praise the name of the Lord. When, Jesus, when God looks at you, 
He does not see sin. He sees the blood of the sacrifice. When Jesus looks at you, no matter how bad you have been, no matter how deep you have been in sin, I've got good news for you. And that is the good news of the gospel. Because of the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, you are forgiven. And not just forgiven now, you're forgiven forever. Praise the name of the Lord. Because you have trusted Christ and you are now finding, found in Christ, you can dwell on the fact that God is no longer angry at you at, or at your sin. Because the sacrifice that needed to appease him, it was done. And he accepted it when he saw his son hanging on the cross. You can now live with the confidence that God is satisfied, no longer angry at your sin because you believe in his son. Because you believe in his son. He calls, he says, we are born of God. We are born of God. We are children of the father. John 1, 11, 12 says, but as many as received him, he gave them power to become the children of God. If you are in Christ, you are a child of God. Praise the name of the Lord. And the enemy has got nothing on you. I say the enemy has got nothing on you. Because when he comes with accusation, you can stand firm on the anchor of the blood of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Number two, the finished work of the cross came to reconcile us. Reconciliation. Our relationship with God was restored through the finished work of the cross. Our relationship, remember I said... In the beginning, when Adam sinned, the relationship with God was broken. But through Christ, the second Adam, our relationship has been restored. We have been reconciled to God. Praise the name of the Lord. We all know what it means to have a broken relationship. Probably not all. Some of us have an idea of what it means to have a broken relationship. And when I say broken relationship, I don't just mean uh, a, a man and woman or in a marriage setup. A broken relationship could be even between a, a parent and a child where you do not see eye to eye. But because of the blood of Christ, I want to declare that even any one of us in the house who has a broken relationship, be it marriage, be it mother to son or father to son, because of the sacrifice of Christ, that relationship is being restored and reconciled in the name of the Lord. Amen? Reconciliation is a certainty for rejoicing. It is a certainty for rejoicing. Because one, we were in sin. We were in the kingdom of darkness. But now we have been brought back. God does not count iniquity on you, child of God. Because the psalmist say, if God was to count iniquity, who would stand? Because of the sacrifice of his son, we have been restored back to God. We are supposed to be enjoying our life on earth as we await to go to heaven like it was in the Garden of Eden. Because our relationship has been restored. We have been reconciled back to God. The Bible records in Romans 3 verse 23 that for all have sinned. All. Even that child that you bear. Praise the name of the Lord. You know sometimes in, in the journey of parenting we train our children and, and along the way, you discover sometimes kuna, kuna tu wongo wongo tu tunatokeanga. Parents, you know what I'm saying. Unauliza unambiwa, ah, see mimi, praise the name of the Lord. And you know, because you have a lot of experience, you have been there. You, you ask your child and they are very innocent. They are looking at you and they are saying, mm hata -mm, sikulamba yo skari, praise the name of the Lord. It is not me. And you ask, and, 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 and sometimes you, you, you want to spank them and ask them, na hii kudanganya ulitoa wapi? It is the nature of sin. Praise the name of the Lord. But for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Before Christ, our problem was a state of alienation. Sin, being born in sin is a state. We are saying that before we came to Christ, our status, our status that was that we were born in sin. 
Bwana Yesu asifiwe. But the moment we come to Christ, our status changes. Praise the name of the Lord. We were separated because of sin. Isaiah 59 verse 2. There was a barrier that we could not access God. And I bless the Lord because no matter how hard we work, we cannot earn salvation. The Bible says in, uh, in, in, um, in uh, is it Ephesians, that the, the, the salvation is a gift of God. By grace, we have been saved through faith. It is a gift of God that no man should boast. We cannot work hard to earn salvation. It was already paid for. It's already accomplished on the cross. Praise the name of the Lord. And for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so we cannot do it on our own part, no matter how hard or how many good works we do. But it says, God restored the broken relationship by reconciling us to himself through the death of his son. For all have fallen short of the sin and fallen short of the glory of God. But through Christ, we have been reconciled back to God. We can boast by saying, I am a child of God. I am no longer living a life of sin because I have been reconciled back to God through the death of Christ. To reconcile means reestablish a friendship between two parties. The friendship that existed in the Garden of Eden that was broken because of sin by the finished work of the cross, that relationship was established again. Praise the name of the Lord. It was settled on the cross. Through the cross, everything that you will ever do, not whatever you have done in the past alone, anything that you're doing now or you will ever do, the sacrifice of Christ was once and for all. Praise the name of the Lord. God has repaired the relationship. We have been reconciled to him. Romans 5, 8 says, But God demonstrates his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You see, God did not wait for us to start making a move towards him. He did not wait for us to try and get our own salvation, to, to try and appease him. He made the first move. He gave. Praise the name of the Lord. And because he gave, he demands of us a response towards his giving. Praise the name of the Lord. And how do we respond? It's by giving our lives to Jesus. It is by giving our lives to Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. We have been reconciled to God. God loved us so much that while we were God's enemy, he did what he did to reconcile us to himself through the blood of Christ. He did not wait. He did not wait for me to cry out to me, but he clothed himself in frail humanity. Praise the name of the Lord. And for that reason, I am forever grateful for the cross. I am forever grateful for the cross. Friends, if we are to glory, let us glory in the cross. Praise the name of the Lord. Jesus Christ has fully paid man, mankind's debt, removing the barrier between God and men. And he has made a bridge through, him, through his life. He, he, he says, no one can come to the Father but by me. We cannot get to God on ourselves. Our works cannot get us to God. Our righteousness cannot get us to God. Our good giving cannot get us to God. Our religion cannot get us to God. Only the blood can get us to God. Praise the name of the Lord. And so our relationship has been restored. We have been reconciled back to God. Like the story of the lost son in Luke 15, 7 to, to 10. When the son left the father's presence and went away, the moment two pictures are portrayed there, when he was leaving, the father was sad. But it is written, when the son was coming back, the Bible records that the father 
saw the sun from a distance and he ran towards the sun. Today God is running towards you. He is embracing you back to himself. Praise the name of the Lord. He is not even waiting for you to come knocking to his door. By the blood, he is running to you. He is saying, my son, you do not live in condemnation. He is saying, my child, you cannot walk in sin anymore. I have made the sacrifice that is perfect for you. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord is running towards you. Are you going to run towards him? Praise the name of the Lord. Reconciliation is a present reality for every Christian. It is a present reality. I was once an enemy of God. But now he says, I no longer call you servants. I call you friends. Why? Because the relationship has been restored. Praise the name of the Lord. The relationship has been restored. Living in the present reality of reconciliation with God. God is not angry with me. I am a friend of God. I can approach his throne with confidence to obtain mercy and find grace in time of need. Praise the name of the Lord. Because this reconciliation extends to everyone who chooses to receive it by faith. Remember. He has extended his hand. He has made the bridge. He has closed the barrier. But he is saying, are you willing? It is one thing to know, and it is another thing to acknowledge and to accept. Praise the name of the Lord. God, by virtue of reconciling us to him, has also given us the ministry of reconciliation. He has told us to go into the world. We have enjoyed knowing this Christ and knowing that we are no longer living in condemnation. But it is not just enough to know that. There is somebody out there who is dying in sin. There is somebody out there who has not met the Lord. There is somebody out there who is saying that I am not good enough to be saved. I have done so much. I cannot be accepted by God. We have been given the ministry of reconciliation to bring others back to God. Praise the name of the Lord. We have been given the great commission. Just as we have enjoyed being reconciled back to God. How many people are we reconciling back to God? Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He has committed to us the ministry and the message of reconciliation. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 18 and 19. The ministry of reconciliation. You can now live with confidence that the barrier of sin has been taken away and the bridge has been built between you and God because of Jesus' finished work on the cross. This was God's act of reconciliation. Your relationship with God is restored. It is no longer broken. Just picture a chain, a chain that is broken, but because God has loved us so much that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He has become the missing link in our relationship with God. And he has come to restore us back to God. Number three truth about the, uh, the, the finished work of the cross. We have seen propitiation. We have seen reconciliation. Number three, we are redeemed. Redemption. Because of the finished work of the cross, redemption simply means that we have been purchased out of bondage, purchased out of sin. We were bought with a price. You are not of your own. The moment you accept Jesus, the moment you begin to live and believe in him and receive him as your Lord and Savior, you are no longer a slave to sin. You are no longer walking under bondage because you are the redeemed of the Lord. In the Old Testament, when slaves were being redeemed, there was something that needed to be given. There was an exchange. Redemption did not just occur verbally. There was a certain transaction that happened. Praise the name of the Lord. If it took like 50 years for somebody to be liberated from a, a life of slavery, there was an exchange. 
If you read in the, in the book of Ruth, when Boaz was, uh, uh, is, is named the, the king's redeemer of, uh, of, uh, of Ruth, there is something that he did. Praise the name of the Lord. There was a custom. There was a culture. There was a removing of a shoe and exchanging to the other party that signified that this person is no longer a slave. We have paid the price for him or for her. And by the finished work of the cross, our redemption, our purchase from bondage, our purchase from sin was completed. Therefore, the enemy, I repeat, the enemy has no hold on you. He cannot keep on reminding you how bad you are, how unfaithful you have been, how much of a sinner you are. If you are in Christ, that was already dealt with on the cross. Praise the name of the Lord. We were born into bondage. Bondage to sin. In Colossians 1.13, we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Because of the sin of Adam, we all by nature were born into sin. But by the second coming, the second Adam, who is Christ, we were also accepted back to God. Praise the name of the Lord. His blood is a blood of redemption. He purchased us out of the bondage of sin. And now we've been translated from the kingdom of darkness. We are now living in the kingdom of light. Praise the name of the Lord. You are no longer in bondage. You are free. Praise the name of the Lord. You are free from every addiction. You are free from every bondage, every enslavement of sin. May you walk free because you have been redeemed by the blood. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Redemption refers to recovering ownership. Hallelujah. Recovering ownership by paying a stipulated sum. For you to recover something, praise the name of the Lord. In, in the present age, kuna watu wanaitua Shylock. And if you've ever visited a Shylock, there's an exchange that happens. Anakwambia nitakupatia pesa in exchange of your logbook. Wana sifiwe. Ama nitakupatia, unipatia TV yako, na mini kupatia pesa. And then they tell you, at the end of the day, ukirudisha hiyo pesa, ndi utachukua TV yako. But utarudisha na urudisha na interest. Praise the name of the Lord. There is a transaction that happens. And for us, reden redemption refers that ownership was changed. When we were in the Garden of Eden, when we had no sin, we belonged to God. But when sin came in, separated us from God, and we became children of bondage. And we were under the dominion of sin and the dominion of darkness, whose ruler was the enemy. But the moment we come to Christ, our ownership status changes because of the blood of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. It can mean also that we have been set free. Redemption also means to set something or someone free from bondage by paying a ransom. Let me give an illustration of kidnappers. When a kidnapper uh, takes somebody hostage and they begin calling, they say, Tunataka milioni moja, idipositiwe mahali fulani for us to release this person. True or not true? And for us, the enemy had taken us captive. The enemy had taken us captive, but because of the sacrifice, the finished work of the cross, we were released. The ransom that was paid was the life of Christ and the blood of Christ. And therefore, we can walk in liberty. Praise the name of the Lord. Jesus Christ has set you free. And if you be in Christ, be free indeed. Praise the name of the Lord. Walk in freedom. Don't walk under condemnation. It is through the blood of Christ or the purchase price that we are redeemed. We are redeemed from slavery of sin and from the empty way of life handed down to us by our forefathers. Adam handed us the life of sin as a result of sin. There are things that God proclaimed in the Garden of Eden. 
when we were living in plenty and in abundance, and all we could do is enjoy, is enjoy the fellowship with God, sin came, separated us, and as a result of God, of that, God declared to Adam, you will eat by the sweat of your brow, and the earth will produce thorns and thistles. And to Eve, the Lord said, you will bear your children in pain. But today, by virtue of being born again, by virtue of believing in the Son of God, we have been redeemed from slavery. We have been redeemed from an empty life. Jesus said, I came. The, end, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy in John 10.10. 10. But he says, I have come that you may have life and have it in abundance. Friends, when we rest in the finished work of the cross, we begin to live a life of abundance. Before Christ, we were in a state of slavery and uh, slavery to sin and death, both spiritual and physical, because the wages of sin is death. In the beginning, God intended man to fellowship with him to eternity. But when sin came, Death came. But I bless the Lord because the Bible records that if sin came through one man and also righteousness has come through Christ, how much more are we supposed to reign in life? Praise the name of the Lord. We who are sin now have become the righteousness of Christ by virtue of being in Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. So we are supposed to reign in life. We are not supposed to live life like we do not know ourselves, like we do not know our identity. Praise the name of the Lord. The finished work of the cross gives us an identity, a new identity. God chooses to redeem us. Why? Because it is an extension of his love and his purpose for us. If God did not love man so much, he would not have given the sacrifice. Praise the name of the Lord. It, despite the sin of man, God still reached out to Adam. He still looked out for Adam. He was looking for the fellowship. Even today, through the preaching of the gospel, we see God extending his love to the world. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, or atheist, whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Praise the name of the Lord. The life of freedom leads us to offer our bodies to God as a living sacrifice. And to his righteousness leading to holiness, lavished grace, and eternal life. Someone who walks under redemption, their life is characterized by hearts under obedience to God. If God says I am free, then I am free. If God says I am not condemned, then I am not condemned. If God says I am healed, then I am healed. Praise the name of the Lord. He became poor that I may be rich. Praise the name of the Lord. Am I living that reality? Praise the name of the Lord. Am I living that reality? That he who knew no sin became sin that I may become the righteousness of God. Him who was rich became poor that I might become rich. Praise the name of the Lord. God redeems us to rescue us from dominion of darkness and bring us into the kingdom of his son. Praise the name of the Lord. Colossians 1, 1, chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 13 and 14, where we have forgiveness of sin. We have not just been brought into the kingdom of God. We have been purchased we have been forgiven and our, the price for our sin has already been settled by the finished work of the cross. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Redemption also means that God redeems us from all wickedness 
to purify for himself a people that are his very own and eager to do what is good. Titus 2, 13 and 14, the grace of God has appeared, teaching all men to say no to ungodliness. Praise the name of the Lord. God redeems men and women from every tribe. This should also go to all Kenyans. God has redeemed you and I from every tribe, from every language, people, and nation. And he has caused us, according to Revelation 5, 9, and 10, to be a kingdom of priests to serve him. We have been re redeemed from our tribes. When we see each other, may we not look each, uh, at each other like the kikuyu I see in you, or the luo I see in you, or the kamba I see in you. If I am in Christ and you are in Christ, we are of the same kingdom. Praise the name of the Lord. It doesn't matter your political affiliation. If you are in Christ, I am in Christ. We have been made kings and priests, and our purpose is to serve and minister to God. Praise the name of the Lord. Number four, the finished work of Christ means forgiveness. Your guilt has been taken away. When the Lord looks at you because of the sacrifice of his son, what you were meant to pay, what fine and penalty that you were supposed to carry, Christ has taken it up upon himself. And therefore, when God looks at you, he sees Christ. You are free from guilt. You are forgiven. Please, child of God, walk like a forgiven child. Praise the name of the Lord. Do not allow yourself to wallow in unforgiveness. Do not allow yourself to wallow in condemnation. The continual reminder of our sins keep us from experiencing freedom and enjoying our relationship with God that we have by faith in Christ Jesus. We need a savior who comes in and does for us what we can't do for ourselves, forgiveness. He says, I have forgiven you. In Christ, we are forgiven. We no longer live a life that is full of guilt. There's a woman in the, in the book of Luke chapter 7, I believe it's Mary Magdalene, who poured her, um, washed uh, Jesus' feet. And, and, and we are told she poured her ointment and he, she cleaned her, the, the feet of Jesus with her, with, with her hair. Praise the name of the Lord. Every guilt that was her, was hers, was taken over by Christ. And Christ told her, whatever it is that you have done, your sins are forgiven. Praise the name of the Lord. What is forgiveness? Forgiveness means to send off or send away. Our sin is transferred to a substitute. Christ has become our substitute for sin. The penalty that was laid on us because of sin, Christ has become our substitute. It's like being in a court of law. And there's a prosecutor who is accusing you of doing this and that and the other. And in this case, the devil is the accuser of brethren. And when he stands before God, he accuses you and says, remember, God, remember this man has failed. Remember this man is a drunkard. Remember this man is immoral. And as the devil brings in the accusation and the accusation, and God, here is the righteous judge. On one hand is the enemy accusing you. On, on, on the judgment seat is God the Father. But on this other side is Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. And as the judgment upon you is being read, saying by, because of what you have done, A, B, C, D, this is the judgment that you are supposed to carry. Christ steps in and says, I have paid the price for this man. I have paid the price for this woman. That judgment that is supposed to be on you, put it on me. Praise the name of the Lord. We are forgiven. That is done in totality. And he says that your sins, I will remember no more. Friends, God is not a man that he should lie. When he says he has forgiven, he has forgiven. 
He does not keep a record of wrong. He will not come today and tell you, hey, yesterday you stole, I forgave you. The other day you murdered, I forgave you. No. God, once he forgives, he forgives and he forgets. Praise the name of the Lord. The enemy has no hold on your life because you are forgiven once and for all. Praise the name of the Lord. Once you have trusted in Jesus. God promised his people that one day forgiveness will no longer be a temporary solution, but it will be complete and permanent. And that happened on the cross. Because in the Old Testament, you would be forgiven and a lamb would be offered. But tomorrow, if you go and happen to sin again, you would be forced to bring another sacrifice. Friends, there is no sacrifice that we are waiting for that surpasses the sacrifice of the blood. It was finished. It was accomplished. Your forgiveness is a closed chapter according to God. Praise the name of the Lord. Jesus Christ set you free from the burden. You no longer have to carry heavy load on you. Carrying your sins. Oh God, you know I did this. You know even now, I, I, I go to church, yes, but sometimes I find myself not walking in the ways of God. You are forgiven. You are forgiven even 20, 40 years to come. You are still forgiven. Praise the name of the Lord. Because there is no other sacrifice that we are waiting for. It was done on the cross. Praise the name of the Lord. And that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sin against them. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 19. All of your sin, once you put your faith in Jesus, whatever you have done that was wrong in God's eyes, from the time you were born to the time of your death has been canceled. Praise the Lord. I said, whatever you did from the time you were born to the time that you will die, it has been canceled. Praise the name of the Lord. Taken away, all of it, past, present, and future. Jesus took it upon himself and nailed it on the cross. You are forgiven. Forgiven. Praise the name of the Lord. Number five and then we, number six, five and six, and then we conclude. The finished work of the cross means that we have come to a place of being justified. Justification. Justification means that we have been declared righteous in the eyes of God. If you are in Christ, the righteousness that is in Christ becomes your righteousness. The holiness in Christ becomes your holiness. Because there's nothing in our own flesh, in our own power, that we can do to attain the righteousness of God. But by being in Christ, he's saying, you have become justified. Or simply put, I have become just as if I had never sinned. Praise the name of the Lord. The chapter, a new chapter of your life has been opened. And a, re, a new relationship has been restored. Praise the name of the Lord. God declares to you, child of God, not guilty. Praise the name of the Lord. Let me go back to the courtroom session. When you are accused, when you go before a magistrate or a judge, there's something they call taking plea. Taking plea Unaulizwa, are you guilty or not guilty? But here Christ comes in because of his blood, because of the accomplished work of the cross. He says, my child, you're not guilty. My child, you're not guilty. I say you're not guilty because of the accomplished work of the cross. Justification is to declare righteous and to declare not guilty. You have been declared righteous. You have been declared not guilty because of what Christ did on the cross. Jesus took your sin and therefore God declares you righteous. It is called the great exchange according to Paul in 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 21. The Bible says, God made the one who did not know sin to be sin for us so that in him... We would become the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. He who knew no sin became sin that we 
may become the righteousness of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Therefore, in Christ, Christ has taken my place, my place of being guilty. And therefore, God, when he looks at me, he says, you are the righteous one. You are justified. Praise the name of the Lord. Number six, the finished work of the cross also means that we have been sanctified. To be sanctified means to be set apart as God's possession for his exclusive use. Sanctification. God has purified us. God has cleansed us that we no longer bear the stench of sin. When we come before the Father, our offering, our sacrifices, our worship, our praises rises to him like a sweet-smelling aroma because of the finished work of the cross. We have been sanctified. We have been set apart for his glory. Praise the name of the Lord. When God looks at you, he already sees you as perfect. And that is why he's saying, I have set you apart for an exclusive use. Friend, God, God wants to use you. And some of the reason why most believers shy away from serving God or being used of God in the service of God is because they look at themselves and feel, I, me, me, uh-uh, ni kama sijakamilika, you know, I, I don't sing too well. I, I, I don't have a perfect voice. You know, I am not eloquent. I, I, am, I don't think I can serve. Praise the name of the Lord. But I have got good news for you, child of God. Because of the finished work of the cross, Christ has sanctified you, has set you apart, ready to be used as a noble vessel in the house of God. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to conclude by saying, praise the name of the Lord. If you're writing, you can write this down. That's all this truth that we have learned today. Propitiation, reconciliation, forgiveness, justification, sanctification. They are gifts that came through Christ. And they are for every believer or everyone that chooses to believe. Praise the name of the Lord. Because of the cross... You can dwell on the fact that God was fully satisfied by the finished work on the cross. Because of the cross, God is no longer angry at your sin because you believe in his son. You can dwell on the fact that the barrier of sin has been taken away and complete reconciliation has been done between you and God. And it is now possible because of Jesus' finished work on the cross. Your relationship with God is restored. You are a child of God. You are no longer termed forsaken. You are not desolate. You are not hopeless if you are in Christ. Because Christ is in you, the hope of glory. You can dwell on the fact that as a believer, you have been purchased by the blood of Christ out of slavery and you have been released to walk in freedom as God's act of redemption. Friends, let us begin to walk in the freedom of what has been purchased of us. You have a new master. Slave is no longer your master. The flesh is no longer your master. But you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. Who, who can give you freedom from any entrapping sin? Name it. Any sin, immorality, homosexuality, drunkenness, addiction. God, through the power of the Holy Spirit that is alive in you, has become your new master. You are no longer a slave to sin. You can also dwell in the fact that you are completely forgiven of your sin as Jesus promises. And he has cleansed you from every guilt. What kills people is guilt. Yes, you have faith that you have been forgiven. But the devil messes up with your mind and keeps you guilt hanging around your head. 
that when you're walking, you're not walking in confidence. You're looking at yourself in the eyes of your past, in the eyes of who you, we, you used to be. But the Bible has clearly told us this morning that in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that those who are in Christ, hallelujah, if you are in Christ, you are no longer who you used to be. You are no longer the adulterer you used to be. You are no longer the man you used to be, the woman you used to be. You are no longer the drug addict you used to be. You are a new creation, and you can rest in that fact. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can dwell on the fact that you have been declared righteous. You are not waiting to get to heaven to be made righteous. You have become the righteousness of God. You are now perfectly acceptable to a holy God based on your faith in his son. You are accepted. And you can dwell on the fact that God declares you holy because of your faith in Christ. You are sanctified, set apart from, for him. Friends, mankind's disease was sin. And because of this disease called sin, we were, one, never able to make ourselves well. Number two, we were in the bondage of sin and bondage to the disease called sin. Number three, we were alienated from the one who could heal us. Number four, we carried the guilt of having the disease. Number five, we experienced cumulative effects of the disease. Because of sin, death came in. But also because of the sacrifice of Christ, life has come to reign. Praise the name of the Lord. Because of this disease called sin, we are unable to live a purposeful life. Look at anyone living in sin. Their life is meaningless. They may have all the money, drive the best cars in the world, but they live a life that is not peaceful because they have no relationship with Jesus. Friends, may we walk and live in the reality of Jesus' finished work on the cross because it removed all the effects of this disease called sin. So that by his wounds, we have been healed. Healed of our sin, healed of our past, healed of our guilt, healed of our condemnation, and we begin to walk a life of freedom. And we begin to experience liberty. Praise the name of the Lord. Let me conclude by saying that an understanding of Christ's finished work on the cross is the basis, the basis, the very foundation for a firm knowledge of our identity in him. The moment you understand and embrace the finished work of Christ, you have laid a foundation for knowledge of who you are in Christ. No longer forsaken, no longer called a sinner. In him I am free. In him I am liberated. In him I have become the righteousness of God. In him I am sanctified. I am set apart to be used by him. It was totally God's work to make sinners acceptable Again, in his sight, our proper response to the finished work of the cross is to trust, listen to me, trust, our response is to trust and to rest in his work. And finally, continually offer, offer him thanks from grateful hearts along with our willing sacrifice. Let us stand in the presence of the Lord.